if you'll ever need. Welcome back to Holman Stadium here in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm Dom Carl. Joined with a special guest this inning, Mike Glavin, Northeastern Huskies head baseball coach. Mike, thanks for taking some time out to come talk with us. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to be here and see some baseball. So we mentioned, you know, before a couple of your players playing for the Silver Knights, the Navigators. But at first, I want to ask you, you know, how did the relationship start between you and the Futures League? Yeah, we've had a great relationship with uh, with Futures League from its uh, from its start. You know, Chris Hall was the uh, our commissioner back then, and uh, have a great relationship with Chris. And and we've had a lot of players in this league from the start, and uh, league's been great to us. And so we have a lot of local guys on our roster, and so I think it's a natural fit for us to have a lot of guys in this league. Jack Wharf steps in against Griffin Young. Young's looked good so far. Now, with the Futures League, you know, there's a lot of leagues to choose from when you're looking for guys to play summer baseball, but why specifically the Futures League, so many guys from Northeastern? Well, I think the location's important. You know, we have, um, as I mentioned, a lot of local guys. So a lot of them want to be close to home, play in the summer. Their families can see them play. So I think that's a big aspect. Great stadiums like we have here at Holman Stadium and in Brockton. And I think the league does a tremendous job of, of taking care of the guys. And and, uh, and plus, they play a lot of games. You know, 56 games is more than most leagues in the summer. So I think it's just a natural fit for our Northeastern players. Saw another strikeout right there by Griffin Young. He's looked phenomenal so far out of Wheaton. But, you know, especially with this season and the shortened COVID season, how difficult is it to kind of control certain players, whether it be pitch counts, as that ball's hit deep into right field, Dupree, your Northeastern player right there making the catch. But how difficult is it for guys like, you know, Dupree to manage their workload? And what is that like going into a season thinking, you know, let these guys, you know, let it rip or kind of play it conservative in this short year? Yeah, no, for me, it's let it rip. You know, we, obviously, we, we only, we're only going to play 15 games in very shortened season. So for these guys to be out here, we want our position players playing every day. And guys like Dufall and David Steele that are in the league now throwing, we want them to pitch as much as possible. So for me, it's let it rip. You know, get out there, play, get your at-bats, get your live reads on defense, run the bases, get in the weight room. So, you know, we're ecstatic about the league obviously being, being uh, able to play this summer and having a lot of our guys. Max Vieira, one of those guys. That ball grounded to third base. Cormier will field and throw into first. So a quick inning for the Nashua Silver Knights. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the third inning here in Nashua. One nothing Knights. Kelly Automotive, we make it easy. That's the Kelly way. 11 brands in seven locations in Massachusetts, recognized as one of the top 100 dealers in the United States and the best place to work by the Automotive Group and Boston Globe. That's Kelly Automotive. We are back. Don Picaro joined alongside Mike Glavin. You're back for another half inning. Good to have you in the booth. Love it. A quick half inning where I get, to get a chance to see Jared hit here this inning, so that's good. So with that, one of the players I wanted to talk about is Max Vieira. You know, he's one of these guys that comes in high school, hasn't really even played a game yet, and now he's in the Futures League. One thing that's specific about the Futures League is letting these guys play that are in high school. How important is that to let your guys get college-level competition before even playing a game? Yeah, what a great opportunity. We're really excited to have Max coming in this fall. He's having a great summer, but I think you nailed it. You know, one of the only leagues that allows incoming freshmen to play, and what an experience for Max to play against other college players to be on a team with guys that he'll be playing with at Northeastern and Jared and and uh, Brandon Dufall and Eddie Jarvis so just a, a great opportunity for him and incoming freshmen in general and uh, really really lucky to have him here in Nashua and playing a lot. That one skied out to shallow center field it'll be the center fielder Seidel that will take over and make the catch and you know you've had a lot of guys that have just been successful in the program but one thing that's been really a story for the Futures League someone uh, you know like Aaron Savali as Jared Dupree steps in another talented Northeastern product but Aaron Savali in the Cleveland rotation right now you know what is that like kind of seeing your players thrive first in the Futures League and then all the way to the major leagues yeah I think it's an important part of their development right and you know Aaron had a big win last night for the Indians and and uh, just a successful career for us awesome but he did he had a great summer here in the futures league uh, Sean Mellon had a great uh, summer here and developed and draft pick for the Dodgers guys like Charlie McConnell Max Burt uh, Jake Farrell a lot of, a lot of our drafted players almost all of them played 
in the Futures Leagues at some point. So the development portion of the summer and what the Futures does for our players is, is just tremendous. And speaking of that development, Jared Dupree last year had a great season with Nashua. Comes in, was hitting the cover off the ball with you before the 2020 season got shortened. How important is it to have you know, a Futures or a league where you know the competition kind of stays the same so they're able to continue their hot hitting going into their college season? Yeah, this is great. For someone like Jared that was off to a great start for us to be able to play this summer and and um, has all the tools, tough kid, you know, it's great to see him out here and a guy like Mal Jerry that's coming in for us this fall. Get to see him. Ryan Cervoni's over there in the Navs dugout as well. So, uh, but Jared's a tremendous player. He's got a lot of talent, tough kid, multi-sport athlete, local kid and, and really uh, happy for him to be here this summer. It is Jared Dupree with a 1-2 count. Gillette Dupree takes that one right back up the middle. Going to be a tough play for Freelick. The throw is wide of the bag and Dupree in there safely. And with a lot of these guys, you know, it's not the first time that these returners are on Nesson. You have that, you know, the, the couple of spring training games with the Red Sox. And what is that like, you know, with, whether it's the Bean Pot tournament or just in general, those spring training games with the Red Sox, how does that prepare, you know, giving these guys a stage where they can showcase their talents? Yeah, what a great opportunity to be on Nesson. It's great for our players, great for the league. You know, Joe Pellucci now takes over as commissioner of the league. He's done a tremendous job of, of uh, continuing Chris Hall's leadership. But Joe's, uh, you know, able to have these games on Nesson. It's great for the players, great for the league, great exposure. Um, it's just so many positives to be able to play in an atmosphere like this, play under a little bit of pressure being on TV. And, and uh, you know, it's just it just uh, really excited for everything that the, the Futures League has done and, and continues to grow. And and summer development is huge, you know, for, for us college programs. You know, guys coming in, being able to get more innings and more at-bats is, is uh, just a great, great opportunity for them. That's Mike Glavin, Northeastern Huskies head coach. Mike, thanks for taking the time out to come speak with us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It is Dominic Keegan now.